All right, can everyone hear me? Is that good? OK. Oh, I'm, I'm a little overwhelmed by the turnout. This is fantastic. I think uh, hopefully it's a testament to the, the amount of interest about OpenStack and VMware. I think even six months ago, the world was a very different place. In Hong Kong, you know, there's probably a, a fifth or a sixth of the, of the number of people that are here today. So um, sounds kind of like Southwest Airlines, but I know you have a choice in which sessions you attend. And I appreciate you know, that you attended this one. So this is, uh, this is actually the, the first in a, in, a, in a whole kind of set of VMware and OpenStack sessions that'll be in this room this afternoon. So um, at the end of this session, I'll show you kind of a whole card of, of, of what's coming next. In this session, um, this is the goal. This is intended to be kind of the overview session. If you're new to OpenStack and VMware, um, you've you know, probably read that, oh, is OpenStack competing with VMware? What, you know, how does that relationship work? So, I first want to take people through kind of VMware's general philosophy of, of, of open, how they view OpenStack and why we think that they can fit together well. Then go through some of the details of the integration. What are the pieces and how do they fit together? We'll then hear from, from two of our customers that we've been working with with OpenStack on VMware, um, Intel and Wells Fargo. We'll just talk briefly about their experiences. And then I'll give access to a couple resources about how to learn more that, that, that you can do on your own. And just so you know, the next 40-minute session after this will actually be a full 40 minutes of technical deep dive live demo. So if you want to see me look bad, if I, if I don't do it in this 40 minutes, I certainly will in the next one. All right. So and I think this is, this is, this is the starting point um, of, of many of my discussions uh, with, with customers who've you know, read articles or talked to, talk to people, and they, they have this impression that kind of you can go down the route and go to OpenStack, or you can go down the route and do VMware, and kind of it's a decision, it's a fork in the road, you have to make a decision now, and you can never, you can never um, you know, bring them together, have, have, have both together. And so if you take one thing away from this talk, it's that you know, this view of the world is, is definitely the wrong view to have, and that if you're interested in, in putting the two together, there's actually a really neat story that we've found working with our customers um, on OpenStack. And really what it is, is we find there's a lot of customers who are very excited about OpenStack as an industry-wide kind of set of cloud APIs and tools and a vendor-independent uh, framework for their developers to be able to build cloud applications on top of their decoupled from the underlying infrastructure. But at the same time, they, they believe that VMware builds really great compute network um, storage and management technologies, and they want to continue to run their data center with those technologies that they, in many times, already know how to operate today. So you know, this is the high-level value um, that, that, that I'd like to take you through. And you know, well, I'll be talking, obviously, a lot about why, why VMware views OpenStack as an opportunity. I actually do think that, that the work that VMware is doing with OpenStack is actually an opportunity for the, for the community as a whole. Because if you look at, you know, I've been part of OpenStack since, since the very beginning. We've kind of, it's always been this push to get further into the enterprise and to go more mainstream in terms of customers. And I think having a great story around uh, OpenStack and VMware and how that fits with existing enterprise investments and expertise is really something that can help OpenStack kind of get over the hump and, and take it to the next level. So you know, taking one step back, why do people have this impression that there's a fork in the road between OpenStack and VMware? And I would actually argue that it, it comes down to the fact that there's kind of a fundamental misunderstanding of what's really interesting about OpenStack. You know, if you kind of read a lot of articles or something, you probably think it's free, right? And it, it is free in the sense of, yes, you can go download the bits and, um, and, 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 and play around with them or build a big team um, to do something with it. But at the end of the day, building a cloud is never free, right? It's a really hard, really complicated task. Um, and so really what's powerful about OpenStack is not that it's going to cost you nothing. It's that it gives you a lot of freedom and power of choice. What do I mean by that? Well, first off, it gives you freedom in terms of the set of underlying virtualization technologies that, that you're going to use across compute, network, and storage. And then it also, and this is maybe a, a more subtle point, but I think it's equally as important, it gives you a lot of choice in terms of your deployment model. So if you're a big company and you view cloud as absolutely critical and you need to be in the guts and fixing bugs yourself, you can do that, right? Or if, you want someone who want, if you're someone who wants to consume a product that's been packaged and polished and put together, you can do that. And the point is that you can do all of this with the same set of APIs 
that are enabling your developers to automate the provisioning of their applications. So you've effectively decoupled those underlying deployment and infrastructure decisions from the interfaces your API, your, from the APIs your developers work with. So in the future, if your, API, your developers end up moving to a public cloud, right, they'll have an experience that it's at least very similar to the experience that they've had inside their own data center. What's that music? You wanna, <laughs> you wanna close the door? <laughs> so anyway, I'll, just, I'll speak up. Either that or I'll have to start dancing, one of the two. And I'm a terrible dancer, so let's, let's hope someone finds a way to close that door. So um, you know, to go into more detail around the choice of technology, you know, our fundamental view is that OpenStack is a framework. So if, you know, if you've spent as much time in the code as I have, you'll, you'll know that you know, it's, there's basically a set of generic API code in each project. And then there's a set of drivers. So I can pick what drivers I want to enable for compute, for network, for storage. And then I'm going to have to make some decisions about what tools I use to manage those. And you know, ultimately, you as someone who's building a cloud, cloud architecture, a cloud administrator, you have to say, well, what choice of technologies in those underlying buckets are going to you know, let me meet my needs for an OpenStack cloud? You know, what features and capabilities do my developers need? Right? What kind of cost structure am I looking for? What kind of scale am I hitting? How am I, you know, what type of reliability am I trying to achieve? How do I perform monitoring? How do I guarantee that I'm hitting my SLAs? How do I troubleshoot when someone calls for a problem? So I think often, often the, the OpenStack choice is kind of boiled down to something that, you know, or are you going to do it on KVM or are you going to do it on another hypervisor? But really the reality is that you have to think very broadly about, about the technology decisions you, you make and make the decision that's right for, for your company. So, you know, from VMware's perspective, we think that you know, there's a really compelling story about enabling customer choice, um, you know, embracing the fact that, yeah, some customers are going to want to run KVM as well as vSphere, and we think that's fine, right? That, that's right for the customer, and we want to make sure that we can enable that. And, um, you know, and we've always been a company that's backed and, and really believed in, in standard APIs. We were a big, you know, trying to, trying to standardize you know, OVA disk formats, et cetera. The work we've done in Cloud Foundry around PaaS Right, so we believe in the notion of that, that if, if there is a standard cloud API, that will mean people can adopt, um, people can adopt cloud faster, and that, that's a very good thing for us. So essentially what we're trying to do is, is, is do an OpenStack integration that gives you, that retains all of these benefits of OpenStack, right, um, but lets you use them with the innovation and reliability that you know from VMware software. And uh, the important thing to understand here is that there's, no, there's not just one way to, to leverage VMware within an OpenStack, right? You could, for example, choose, we've got customers who simply choose our, our VMware NSX network virtualization solution. This is the former NICERA technology. And they run an OpenStack cloud with KVM and no other VMware in there. That's great, right? That's customer choice. We're enabling it where we provide value, our customers can, can use it, right? Maybe they have a mix of, of vSphere, KVM, and NSX, right? Or maybe they're a full, full VMware customer and they want a w really well integrated solution, then they could have you know, VMware across the board underneath. So again, for VMware, OpenStack is all about enabling customer choice, making sure you have the flexibility to build the infrastructure and you know, build the cloud infrastructure that, that you need. So really when it comes down to our philosophy, it's, it's pretty simple. You know, our philosophy is to contribute, which means participating in the OpenStack community integrating our products, and just improving OpenStack stability and functionality in general to make sure our customers can succeed with it. Second, right, we work with the OpenStack ecosystem. We'll talk about our partners in a little bit. Um, so make sure customers have a lot of options in terms of how they want to deploy OpenStack. Right? And make sure that it's as easy as to deploy OpenStack on VMware as it is to deploy OpenStack on any other platform. And then finally, like every other um, you know, vendor that participates in, in, in OpenStack, Right, we're gonna we're gonna put forward an argument about why we think, you know, we're the right partner for you to choose when building your OpenStack cloud. We'll talk about how VMware technology lets you build a really great OpenStack cloud. So what I'm gonna do for the for the next probably 15 minutes is to kind of dive into each one of these in a little more detail. So first off, contribute. So very quick prehistory. Um, I came from the NICERA team. I was actually the, the project team lead for, for what used to be called Quantum and is now Neutron for, for several years. So VMware's history of, of OpenStack engagement actually goes back to the NICERA team um, who was building the Open vSwitch project even before OpenStack was announced. 
as was part of OpenStack before it was publicly announced. We were at that first Austin summit. And we helped uh, create and, uh, as I mentioned, led the uh, OpenStack networking project for years. Um, then in, in mid-2012, NYSERA was acquired by VMware. And that really was kind of the, the point at which uh, VMware's attitude toward OpenStack um, started to shift. And it was much more of a VMware believing in that kind of better together embrace story. And so in late 2012, or, um, you know, VMware officially joined the OpenStack Foundation as a gold member. And I don't know if any of you remember the news, but at the time this was a borderline scandalous thing. I think there were people who voted against us and said we were going to you know, try to destroy the community and all of this. Um, so the good news is, I, th I think as you'll see, we've been contributing in a very positive way. We've, we've basically, during that announcement, or at the Grizzly Summit pretty, pretty quickly after that, we, um, you know, we publicly committed to say all VMware technologies are going to integrate with OpenStack. And a lot of people thought we weren't going to do it. And as you'll see, I think um, in, in this session and the next one, we've really um, taken that on and, and, and taken that very seriously as a commitment. So if you think about what VMware is doing, right, we're kind of getting involved in OpenStack and expanding our scope with, with each release. So back in the Grizzly release, we basically had Neutron networking integration. And uh, that was the first release where vSphere was supported in Nova. And then in the Havana release, we continued to iterate and improve those, those uh, network and compute integrations, but also introduced a Cinder volume driver. And we'll go into more details on each one of these integrations in a minute. And then in the most recent IceHouse release, we've even further expanded our, our engagement with the project. We're now contributing heavily to the Glance project, um, and to, we've, we've started integrating vSphere with Solometer as well. So as you can tell, right, this is a continuing trend of VMware getting more and more involved, not just in the old projects that we were involved in from an ICERA perspective, but across the board and making sure that, again, for us, it's all about if our, one of our customers wants to use OpenStack, they should have a great experience using it on top of VMware technologies. So, um, you know, numbers can be, can be deceptive or whatever, so don't, don't, you know, my goal here is not to, not to pull rankings and all of that, but I think I, I always like to show this slide because it, it's a good counteract to, to the set of people who said VMware wasn't actually going to contribute to OpenStack, wasn't going to participate, wasn't going to integrate their products. In the last VMware IceHouse release, we had 24 different developers who you know, worked with the community to get 515 different patches in. And not only did we you know, work with the community to get our patches reviewed, but we reviewed um, over 4,000 other community patches of other people's code to make sure that, again, the overall quality of the project um, remained high. So this is kind of a schematic of the projects that we contribute to. Um, IceHouse for VMware was kind of a, a watershed release in the sense it was the first, um, first release where our overall contributions to non-networking projects actually outweighed the contributions to the networking projects. So again, it shows that we're, we're broadly engaging with the OpenStack community. The size of the, of the project name up there corresponds roughly to the number of commits we have in those projects. And you know, again, rankings are rankings, and they, they can be deceptive. but and if you look at the core integrated OpenStack projects, um, VMware actually in ISOS was the number four contributor. Right? So there's, there was Red Hat, IBM, Rackspace, and then VMware. So you know, I, I think it's anyone who's, who's kind of got their ear to the ground and is looking at how we're really engaging the community um, really has a sense that we're taking OpenStack very seriously at VMware. So the second part of this is, OK, great, the, code, the code's upstream, but how do customers get it? So, you know, like I mentioned, one of the key things about OpenStack is customer choice in terms of deployment options. And, uh, you know, there's a whole spectrum of how, how, uh, how OpenStack can be consumed, and VMware wants to play in all, all across that spectrum. Right? So we have, a, we have a set of customers who download the OpenStack source code themselves and use, you know, use it on top of VMware technologies. And, you know, that's the infinitely flexible but pretty complex got to build your own team of developers uh, model. And then on the far end of the spectrum, there are people building you know, full integrated products that are tightly, tightly bound to, uh, to VMware technology. And somewhere in the middle are kind of your, your standard OpenStack distros that we're working very closely with to, um, to make sure that those distros are validated on top of VMware technology. In particular, here's a set of officially announced um, distro partners for VMware. So Canonical has been working with us for a very long time. They were the first ones to integrate their Juju charms with um, vSphere and NSX. And as you saw, their recently announced landscape installer also supports both vSphere and NSX. So we continue to be very happy um, with, with our partnership with Canonical. SUSE also announced that SUSE Cloud uh, 3 
Uh, SUSE Cloud 2 supported vSphere, and SUSE Cloud 3 now supports vSphere and NSX. So we're, we're very excited about that. Mirantis, um, we recently did a great webinar with them where we reviewed um, and gave a demo about how Mirantis Fuel now supports vSphere and NSX. And this one's actually fairly new and not some people haven't heard it, but Red Hat has recently publicly stated that they are going to, um, in Red Hat, I think it's ROS 5, um, officially support vSphere and NSX. So I think, you know, this is, this is another example of how, you know, A, VMware is embracing customer choice. And I think it's also a statement that, you know, as these companies move into the enterprise, um, you know, enterprises are, are coming back to them and saying, supporting, supporting our VMware infrastructure within OpenStack is important to us. So that's, that's obviously very exciting for us. Um, if you're interested in learning more and actually seeing how these different integrations work, we're actually taking one of our sessions and um, having, our, having these four distro partners give kind of little lightning talks about how their um, deployment technologies and their installers and their, their tools um, work really well with OpenStack on vSphere and NSX. So that will be in this room around 3.30 3 to 4.10 today. And then I also want to call out a couple other really key partners, HP and IBM. We've been working very closely with them upstream. They've been doing work to make sure that the vSphere and other VMware drivers are high quality as well. So, and then the last part is, is around differentiating, right? How, how is it that, you know, we can make an argument about why the best way to run OpenStack is to run it on top of VMware? And, you know, this goes back to what, what, what we talked about earlier, right, which OpenStack's a framework, the quality of the cloud you get is going to depend on the components you put into it. And VMware's goal, as I mentioned, is to basically say we've got a bunch of great data center um, software technology, compute, network storage, management, and we want to make sure all of that fits into OpenStack in a way that really provides customer value. So here's the high-level schematic of, 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 of the touch points between uh, OpenStack and VMware. And what you'll notice is right, we're supporting all of the standard tools northbound. So what your developers see are all the standard tools, right? We're not cramming in all of these extensions and proprietary stuff or whatever, right? Our goal is to have standard OpenStack northbound. Um, and then in terms of Nova, Neutron, Cinder, and Glance, we have integrations that um, you know, Nova can call out to vCenter, Neutron can call to VMware NSX, Cinder and Glance can also take advantage of any third-party storage that's integrated um, with vSphere already. And then we have a set of um, operations tools that, are, that, are, that also help you run an OpenStack deploy. So I've got a couple slides here that are deep dives on each one of these, but I'm actually going to go through them quite quickly because I want to A, get to the customers, which is the most interesting part, and B, we have an entire kind of deep dive session next that, um, that, we'll, uh, that we'll be able to kind of go in deep, um, deep in terms of each of these integrations. So first off around Nova, just very quickly, I think probably the biggest question we get around Nova is, when Nova integrates with, with vCenter, do I still get to use things like vMotion, HA, DRS, et cetera? And the answer is yes. And we've been very careful about how we integrate with, with um, Nova to make sure that all of those kind of capabilities that you know and love from the vSphere platform are retained um, uh, when, when, you, when you integrate with, with uh, OpenStack. And the other key thing to understand from, from a vSphere perspective is that that because you're building on such a very solid foundation of vSphere with all the operational capabilities in it, it actually can really greatly simplify your overall process for adopting OpenStack. And so that's something we see um, that people are finding very compelling in terms of um, when, they're, when they're making the, their decision around how they might uh, deploy OpenStack going forward. So again, you can kind of read this in the background. I'm not going to go through each bullet point. Um, so on the, on the NSX side, you know, network virtualization is, is still something that's relatively new. I think it's, I think it's very fair to say that, that VMware has seen, uh, the VMware NSX technology is seen as the leading network virtualization solution um, within OpenStack. We've been in production OpenStack installs for well over two years at this point. Um, and the really cool thing is it lets you implement a lot of rich network functionality. It lets users request um, networks and routers just like they request um, VMs but in a way that's completely independent of the underlying physical hardware in your network. And we're obviously, this is actually a capability that works across not just ESX, but also KVM and Zen server. So even if you have a heterogeneous cloud, it, it provides a lot of value there. Cinder and Glance, this is an area we'll do a big deep dive on um, in the next session. But the, the short, short summary is that any storage that works with vSphere, whether it's NFS, Fiber Channel, iSCSI, if, if it's been plugged and validated with 
vSphere, which is mo almost every storage provider, it will automatically work in your OpenStack environment. No need for a separate driver from that vendor. No need for the, to worry about the fact that that driver probably hasn't been tested very well, right? You can leverage all of that integration with vSphere. Um, and then a new technology that, that, that's really compelling, particularly within these OpenStack scenarios, is something called VMware Virtual SAN. And it actually takes the disks and SSDs that are in the hypervisors themselves and creates a virtual SAN uh, so that you actually don't have to have a physical SAN, um, but it provides a lot of the same benefits in terms of supporting high availability and vMotion and, and all of that. So in the demo, in the next session, we'll actually be, everything will be, we'll, we'll include a cluster that has, uh, has vSAN and we'll, we'll highlight that in the demo. So, and then finally, around management technologies. I think people at this point are pretty aware that, that a lot of the difficulty in terms of, of implementing and actually be going from, oh, I installed OpenStack to I'm successfully running an OpenStack cloud is around management. And uh, so our goal here is really to make sure that, that, that our customers have the management tools that they need to be successful with OpenStack Cloud. So there's two big areas that, that we focus on. Actually, I'll go back to this one. So there's something called vCloud Automation Center, which um, that, that's more of a, you can use it to deploy applications. It's kind of a higher level service that actually works between different clouds. So it can talk directly to vSphere, it can talk to OpenStack, it can actually talk to AWS as well. But it lets you perform higher level policy management on top of OpenStack. And then something that, I, that, that, that will really hit in the demo next is the infrastructure management, right? How do I troubleshoot? How do I do capacity planning? What happens when a tenant calls up and says, oh, I think the cloud's down? Or, oh, I had this, this VM instance is in error state. Right? What do you do there? You know, Basically, trying to figure out which host to SSH into and uh, you know, grepping through logs is not, not, not a great management strategy. So we're building tools, both vCenter operations management and log insight. We're building specific OpenStack awareness into those tools, and we'll highlight that in, in the next demo. So anyway, without further ado, I'm going to hand it off to Glenn Ferguson and Ty Workman. We're going to talk a little bit about the work we've been doing with Wells Fargo on OpenStack and VMware. Working? Is it live? Yes. Yeah, yeah I think so. Uh, well, thank you, Dan, for that. Um, so we are using uh, VMware for our OpenStack deployment. And the reason I'm up here is when I came into Wells Fargo probably about eight months ago, I thought I was a purist. Open source, came from Netflix. Like, that was my story. Are you on the mic? I'm going to show there. Is it yeah, I think it has to be kind of close. Yeah. Oh, OK. Sorry about that. So, you know, I was kind of a purist, thought I was, and I came to this enterprise environment and, and VMware was everywhere. I'm like, okay, you know, we'll give it a shot. I am so happy that that is the scenario. Not only do we leverage um, vSphere for uh, customer instances that are spun up through OpenStack, we also use it to host our OpenStack components. Because of the vMotion and the HA, we get an extra level of resiliency built into it. You know, if there's an underlying hardware failure in the infrastructure, VMware just takes care of that, moves it to the next one in the cluster. So that extra resiliency we get with OpenStack controller nodes themselves, but also the instances that customers run in our cloud, we get that resiliency. Um, I think Dan made several good points about, as a cloud operator, the challenges are interesting, especially around capacity management and troubleshooting. Um, you have to understand when you have to bring in your next rack of servers, your next nodes. So you have to have that below the line visibility. And so the tool sets that, that are there that you know, we could leverage immediately out of the box is tremendously valuable. Um, and there's actually a slide, I think, that you have in here around the actual uh, collaboration on OpenStack itself. Uh, for those of you that have or have not deployed OpenStack, there will be bumps in the road. You know, you're, you'll figure things out, certain configurations, trial and error. Uh, Dan and team have been tremendous partners for us. If you look at this slide, and I think it's a, a build slide, we ran into you know, some issues. We reached out to, to Dan and team, and they were so fast to jump on it, resolve it, get it back into the community, um, you know, revert those changes or backport those in, into our deployments. Um, it was fantastic. I would say that the level of support was a great surprise from, from my perspective. Uh, so you know, they certainly are committed to OpenStack. It was proof in our engagement, the way that they just jumped to, to the table and helped us out. You know, we work for a financial institution, I do. Um, we are not in the role of writing open source and contributing, but to have a partner that's willing to do that on our behalf is huge. 
um, and, and VMware has certainly stepped up to the plate in that area. Um, thanks. Ty, do you have anything that you want to add from the VMware operations perspective on, under cloud? So as Glenn mentioned, uh, being able to make use of a lot of some of the exi existing tool sets that already come with VMware infrastructure, it, it gives us a, a better understanding of exactly what state our environment is, is in. Obviously, you know, clouds are highly dynamic, so if you don't have a good handle on where it is, where it's going, and where it's projected to go, it's, it's very difficult. Uh, like Glenn mentioned, um, we did work with uh, both Dan's and uh, as well as the engineering and development teams with, with VMware. And they were very responsive and showed their commitment to OpenStack on more than one occasion. All right, thanks. So next up, we have Sridhar Mahankali. All right. <laughs> so uh, I'll just spend a few minutes to talk about uh, our, uh, our implementations um, with OpenStack um, and uh, basically talking, uh, integrating with uh, vSphere. So a little bit uh, where we have been in terms of our, our cloud journey. Um, essentially where uh, since 1990s, um, Intel IT has been, uh, or I Intel in general has a huge design grid environment where we do a lot of our um, uh, silicon validation and uh, basically a, a lot of um, simulations surrounding the different phases in the microprocessor lifecycle, we uh, do simulations in the design grid. So we tend to uh, call it the cloud's uncle because we use a lot of automation and um, a, a deep Linux um, expertise and um, contributions to the Linux kernel as well as part of that uh, grid environment. So some of the folks that uh, um, have been operating that environment and lived through that environment, we actually brought that expertise in terms of uh, building out our cloud, uh, a, a private cloud environment uh, as part of our uh, enterprise data centers. And this was around uh, 2010, and by now we have uh, 13,000, uh, more than 13,000 VMs uh, in that um, environment. And uh, VMware uh, is essentially the, the hypervisor that we run that on. And uh, right now we have 75% of our enterprise apps virtualized in that particular environment. And then uh, around 2012, uh, we started our journey on OpenStack um, uh, with um, KVM as the hypervisor at that time, and then we uh, have around 1.5 um, KVMs on that particular environment. So with that background, um, awesome. and as we go forward uh, in 2014 and beyond, one of the things that we are doing is using OpenStack as uh, the single control plane for our hosting environment. And where it makes sense for us, I would like to highlight three different points. Uh, the first one is that uh, it gives a, a consistent user interface um, that the users can uh, converge to in terms of interacting with different uh, cloud technologies that we might have in the background. And the second aspect is, which Dan had highlighted, that it allows us to, uh, from an IT perspective, go with an open source control plane, but at the same time have the ability to uh, leverage different technologies from a network perspective, from a hypervisor perspective, from a storage perspective in the back end, so it has that choice while keeping the user experience consistent. And the third thing uh, is basically, uh, it exposes our infrastructure in a manner where um, our developers can create higher, higher value added services on top of the uh, APIs that we expose from an infrastructure perspective. Okay. Um, so in terms of where our current status is and, and plans uh, are, uh, we've done an initial POC um, and that was, a success, uh, that was successful in terms of integrating uh, an OpenStack control plane with vSphere. And uh, as I indicated, we have a significant amount of uh, existing private cloud environment that is running on top of vSphere. So that uh, integration is very uh, useful and critical for us. Um, primarily the, uh, per from the perspective that uh, if we are converging to, to this control plane and if I am able to integrate with that existing um, vSphere environment, there is less migration that I have to do and I'm able to offer more capability to my existing customers um, on the, on the top of the VMs that they already have in the environment, okay? Um, and in terms of why uh, um, vSphere um, it, as a hypervisor um, resonates with us, it is an enterprise uh, capable uh, platform which we have been leveraging for a few years. And uh, it pr provides uh, some of the, 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 uh, the key capabilities that, uh, that we've seen pr 
a lot of use in enterprise IT in terms of live migration comes seamlessly, DRS, uh, VMware HA, um, and uh, future technologies as uh, VMware adds more capabilities to it. Um, in terms of the integration um, with the OpenStack control pane, here's what, is, uh, what we have already seen work in our environment. Um, essentially, the, the, the VM orchestration, all the capabilities of being able to create a new VM, destroy a, a VM, be able to start and stop that. Uh, so with, purely with VS, uh, vSphere, unless we have access to vSphere, our users didn't have the ability to control their VMs. Uh, but with an OpenStack control pane and exposing them uh, via the no, Nova API, they're able to do that. We, can, we have also tested the VM resizing and um, a, a, as well, and that works um, seamlessly as well. Uh, another thing that we have done is, uh, in terms of the integration with storage, we are able to offer um, self-service storage, uh, where you can actually create a volume, destroy a volume, attach it to an existing VM. All that works um, in our existing uh, VM environment. And uh, the one thing uh, which I highlighted earlier is that we are able to import the metadata of the VMs from the existing cloud environment uh, into an OpenStack control plane and offer uh, the customers additional capability to control the same VMs that they've already deployed rather than having to migrate them. Uh, so in terms of some of the things that uh, we see as additional asks from a VMware perspective, um, this, the, in terms of the first bullet, the multi-data centers for virtual center, um, they've already pr uh, ported, uh, they've already enabled that capability in Ice House and backported to Havana. We just haven't had the opportunity to test it. So as we test it, we'll uh, give the appropriate feedback. <laughs> um, and um, so we definitely uh, look forward to uh, continued VMware participation and support for the OpenStack control plane, um, primarily because it, um, uh, it allows us that uh, vendor agnostic uh, control plane that we can uh, uh, converge to. And uh, so continue, uh, the other, other aspects that are key is to continue working on the federation across multiple instances of um, a VMware private cloud uh, environment as well as in general private cloud environment that we have. And the last thing is, um, one thing that we've noticed is uh, when you integrate from OpenStack control plane to VMware, um, to OpenStack it looks like uh, a one very big uh, compute node. Um, so there are some capabilities that we leverage, uh, that we are looking to leverage, if you will, uh, where uh, we have multiple silos of uh, instances, uh, private cloud instances in our environment, where some offer additional capabilities uh, which, are more, uh, which are more useful for our secure workloads, if you will. So we want to be able to have, uh, to ha uh, for VMware, uh, vSphere to be able to expose, uh, say, visibility to the, into the individual nodes so that we can land uh, secure workloads on secure systems and so on and so forth. Um, with that, I'll... Uh, Great. Back Thanks a lot, guys. And uh, yeah, I think actually host, we should talk about host aggregates because yeah. <laughs> we're already compatible with the host aggregates API and I think okay. that that should solve that problem. So I do not need two microphones. <laughs> no, I was doing it too. <laughs> anyway, th thanks again, guys. I really appreciate you guys coming by and, and sharing your experiences. Um, Oh, I think you had one more. Oh, I have one. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to get to go to Paris. That sounds like a good idea. <laughs> okay, so the last thing I wanted to touch on before we wrap up uh, this session is some, some opportunities for you guys to be able to um, get hands-on with this stuff really easily. And so VMware has this thing called Hands-On Labs. The goal is just to educate our customers about how our software works. You can go to a website. You can see the URL there. And within 30 seconds, you have a virtual desktop spun up into a fully set up lab environment. And this particular lab environment that you'll go to here is a deployment of OpenStack uh, with vSphere uh, supporting Nova and Cinder and with VMware NSX supporting Neutron. So you know, not only is this a great way to learn about OpenStack on VMware, but actually I'm not aware of any other way, period, on any platform, you know, for you to get just this quickly hands-on to a real OpenStack setup where you can act not just as a tenant, but actually as an administrator and go into the guts of the system and learn how it works. So, um, you know, this, this is great. It's available to everyone. Um, I encourage you, encourage you to check it out and send us feedback. So um, there's also another tool that actually we use to build that lab and we're also making available. It's something called Vova and it's not a product and it's not for production workloads. It's targeted just for lab deployments. So if you have an existing VMware lab, this is basically a, an OpenStack all-in-one virtual appliance that you download you enter a few bits of information, 
This is my vCenter IP address. This is the username password. This is the cluster I want to use for OpenStack. Press go, and in a couple minutes, it's, it's a fully, open, fully functional uh, OpenStack on VMware environment. So this, this appliance right here, the one that's public and you can go get there, that, um, that does uh, Nova, Cinder, Glance now, and a Nova network. And then if you have access to NSX, you have access to uh, an equivalent uh, Volvo appliance for that. So, and we're happy to announce today that we have just released, literally today, the, um, a new version of Volvo that's based on the recent Icehouse release. So um, this lets you get kind of hands-on and a great way to gain experience with what's new from VMware in the Icehouse release. Things like our new uh, vSphere Glance driver that lets you use the same data stores you're using for Cinder. Um, use that for Glance back, um, for backing your, your Glance disks. Um, a lot of stuff around storage policies that we did. We'll highlight this in the demo, but it's very easy to create multiple tiers of storage um, with your VMware environment that's consumed uh, via OpenStack. vSAN, I've already talked. We now have full vSAN support, support for OVAs, better image and image caching, and, and a lot more. So you go to this website. This will take you to the general VMware community, and that's a place where you can um, ask questions about how OpenStack and VMware work together, whether it's about Vova or whether you're, you deployed OpenStack um, and VMware with some other technology, some other distro, for example. So, you know, my team and our, and our engineers help monitor that site and, and can hopefully help you out. So with that, I mentioned that this is basically, uh, we've got a couple more sessions coming up after this, but we've actually already had a good number of sessions about VMware and OpenStack at the summit. The white ones are actually by VMware. The gray ones are customers who are kind of talking about their use of, of OpenStack and VMware products. So as you know, all the talks are online. So even if you missed one of these and it looks interesting, just write it down and you'll be able to find it online in a couple weeks. Um, coming up next, we're going to do a deep dive demo. Then we're going to have kind of a lightning round of distros talking about their support for vSphere and NSX. At the same time in the back, we'll be supporting a set of people. If you want to go do that hands-on lab that's online, we'll have kind of a set of experts. I think they're calling it a genius bar. It's probably a trademark infringement. But, uh, you know, that you can, there's an IRC room and there'll be people that can help you there. Um, and then uh, after that, uh, at 4.30, we're talking about Congress, which is a new project that VMware help, um, helped initiate within OpenStack to let people specify high-level business and security policies within OpenStack. And then at 5.20, we'll be talking about um, vSAN and how it fits into to OpenStack. vSAN is, again, that, that new virtual SAN technology from VMware. So um, I think with that, again, just the key takeaways, I think you know, I'm really excited about, about the opportunity that VMware has to, to help bring OpenStack into a lot of enterprises and to really make, make, make real this, this benefit of the, the promise of OpenStack in terms of an open standard API that's very developer friendly on top of great infrastructure that, that enterprises already know and love. So hopefully you've, you've, you've taken at least two things away from this talk. First off is that you know, VMware has a lot of really interesting data center technology, and that's fully integrated into OpenStack. And you know, that's the reason we really do believe that, that if you know, you're an enterprise and you know VMware, the best way you could possibly run OpenStack is to run it on top of VMware. And the second thing, and you know, more important to me personally, actually, is that, you, just, that you, kind of, you have a different mindset in terms of how you think about OpenStack and VMware, and that you really do recognize that VMware is working hard to help make its customers successful with OpenStack if that's what the customer wants to do, because we're all about supporting customer choice, and that we're actively participating in the OpenStack community to make sure that our technologies are, are well integrated. So with that, uh, we are, just like probably everyone else, we are hiring OpenStack engineers. If what you heard today is, is, is exciting, come talk to me. That's the link for the online community if you have questions. If you do the Twitter, um, I tweet a lot about OpenStack and VMware. So you can, you can follow me there, and I'm happy to take any questions. Um, otherwise, I'll just leave this up in the background. And again, in um, I think probably about 10 minutes, we'll start on the deep dive demo session. Thanks.